Hello and welcome back to No BS. Today we turn to talking about the horrible tragedy and the terrible chaos happening in Atlanta, Georgia. This city has literally been set on fire over the weekend and I watched some of the footage last night and it was rather troubling. People were watching on the news as a Wendy's restaurant was set on fire, all because of a terrible incident that happened there outside in the parking lot the night before. We're going to go over all this today and more. We're going to talk about the incident and the ways that the press and media are trying to spin it right away. So first of all, let's talk about what happened. Basically, there was someone sleeping in their car outside this Wendy's, and I believe someone in the store or maybe someone working there called the police on them. Then they pulled this guy out of the car who appeared to be intoxicated. They tested him, and it turned into a whole scuffle. Essentially, they tried to arrest the guy, but he resisted. And he even reached for one of their weapons, started pointing at them, and then tried to run away. This forced the cops to then take another measure, and unfortunately, it caused them to take the guy down and end his life. It's a very tragic case, and it sucks to see anyone die, of course, but it wasn't because he was a certain race. It wasn't because of biasness or anything that the cops might have done wrong. Now, that's possible. There could be more details to come on this. They're going to have to get the cops footage and put them on trial maybe or something, whatever. But as far as most people can see, this was a sort of st standard reaction to this kind of crazy behavior from a suspect. And of course, it sucks when anyone dies. We don't want that to happen, certainly. But if you kind of play stupid games, you're going to win stupid prizes. And that's what basically happened here. But as you could all suspect, this, of course, was turned into a race baiting story that caused lots of chaos. We only recently just started working through the whole Minneapolis episode, but that was still going on. People were still protesting and all that stuff because of George Floyd. And then this happens in Atlanta and they just want to spin it off into another incident. But this incident is another one where it's actually not even close to Floyd because it's far, far worse. We're talking about a guy taking a cop's weapon and pointing it back at them. Granted, I think it turned out to be a taser, but tasers can still be dangerous. And any kind of situation like this where someone's fighting with the cops, they're endangering those cops and also everyone around them. So people want to all suggest and Monday morning quarterback and say the cops should have done this. They could have done this better. But that's a hard thing to say when you're in the moment making, you know, second really, really quick decisions. And also you're trying to protect the neighborhood and everyone else. Like had this guy gotten away, he could have hurt and injured more people. And then the cops would have gotten blamed for that. So they would have gotten blamed either way. They can't win. And what's happened now is it's another race war that's happening this time in Atlanta. And so that was the gist of the original incident. And then the next day is when they started having demonstrators who not only set that Wendy's on fire, which is really ridiculous because it very much had little to do with the actual situation, like maybe go after and protest the cops or something. I wouldn't suggest setting anything on fire or doing anything illegal, but the police department might be the first line. I wouldn't go after a Wendy's just because it happened to happen in the parking lot, but that's besides the point. Now we're talking about fires. This place was on fire. And then next you see a lot of demonstrators and they actually were walking across the highway near there. And that highway had to shut down, which is another illegal, very dangerous thing. And it was just all out chaos over the weekend in Atlanta. I saw lots of people in the streets. I saw the news reports. The news people are all trying to defend this, which was really messed up. They tried to act like it was just this little tussle is what they called it. They said the guy tussled with the police and then they basically shot him down and like acted like this was another kind of murder cop murdering someone when really it's not the case at all. It's a very complicated situation, but anyone who can follow all those details can understand that we're not talking about something like murder. We're not talking about an outright race kind of thing. It's not even to do with race. It's just these people and the perp happen to be black. And whenever that happens, the liberals will defend it and turn it into a race war. And that's what's happened today. And I want to start covering this by looking at a biased article from the New York Times. It says a 27-year-old Atlanta man, Richard Brooks, died after being shot by the police who found him asleep at a Wendy's drive through on Friday night, the authorities said. Now, already, this paints a very different picture of the story. I went over a lot of the details, the most I can remember right offhand. And you can already see there's nothing mentioning about him doing anything wrong. Like they just try to act like he was just asleep in his car 
and then the cop came up and popped him in the head. But that's not the case at all. That's what this New York Times thing is implying, but they don't mention anything about the drugs, the you know, the sleeping is actually illegal to do in a parking lot at a restaurant. Like you're not allowed to trespass unless you're a customer. And then to fight with the cops is highly illegal to grab their weapon and run. I mean, there was a lot of bad things this guy did and none of it's mentioned here. I wonder if it'll come up in the article. So we'll read on a little bit, but this already, this headline is really, really bad and biased. The article says Atlanta police chief resigns after officer shoots and kills a black man. Rashard Brooks had fallen asleep in his vehicle at a Wendy's drive through He was shot after grabbing a taser from an officer, the authorities said, prompting fresh unrest in the city. So there's the people demonstrating this is the kind of situation. It's basically Minneapolis all over again. And I really don't get the whole response. I mean, the police chief resigned right away. To me, it just seems like he knew it was going to be a mess and he just wanted to get out of there. I mean, I don't think he did anything wrong. I don't even know if the cops did anything wrong. Like, I mean, obviously we don't want to kill someone. We want to try to peacefully detain them when we can, but that was past that point. Obviously the tasers didn't work, which is another scary thing. I think they already had tried to tase the guy, but it didn't knock him down. So if you're high on these kinds of narcotics, you can actually just fight through a taser. So a taser is not enough. And then when they grab a taser and then point it back at you, that's when it gets really scary because who knows? I mean, that taser could kill a cop. It could kill someone else. So the fact that they wanted to take the guy and arrest him and detain him is making a lot of sense. And it's really weird that the police chief would resign. But I, I think I understand why New York Times would lead off with that because they want to say, hey, they resigned. So there must have been something wrong there. Early on Sunday morning, Sergeant John Chaffee, a spokesperson for Atlanta Police Department, said the officer who shot the man had been fired, so he already lost his job. The shooting left many in the city once again incensed by the death of another black man at the hands of the police and nervous about the potential for more destructive flare-ups. By Saturday night, protesters had blocked roads at an interstate near the restaurant and apparently set it on fire, according to news reports, with police firing tear gas and flash grenades to try and disperse the crowd. So again, one black person dies, that's a tragedy, everyone thinks that's sad, I'm not even against punishing the cops or getting them fired or something, if that's the case, they have to do it, whatever it may be, but to frame this up as if he's a hero and to blame the Wendy's and burn it down and commit these other crimes that could be worse, like someone could have died in that fire, they're already going to have people losing their jobs, the Wendy's company and that the people that own that franchise are going to lose a lot of money and a lot of wealth and you know that's just going to go away from the area which is just another sign of just messed up thinking i mean these places that they're destroying in this riot and these other riots they're destroying their own towns their own neighborhood and it's just going to make their whole place worse we've seen this happen in other areas recently like again back to the minneapolis story which was the earlier one and happened a few weeks ago we've already seen that town is a total mess they have boarded up places everywhere graffiti all over uh the Police are now going to be disbanded and no one's going to want to go there. The prices on the property have already gone way down, like large percentages. No one is moving to Minneapolis. Everyone's trying to sell their property, but they can't because no one wants to buy there. No one wants to go there. So everyone's losing money and it's just bad for the whole city. The authorities said the man, Richard Brooks, 27, had run from the police on Friday night after failing a sobriety test and grabbing a taser from an officer during a struggle with him. Ms. Bottoms said the security footage appeared to show that Mr. Brooks had fired the taser toward the officer who was chasing him before he was killed, but that she did not consider that a justification for the shooting. While there may be a debate as to whether this is an appropriate use of deadly force, I, for I firmly believe that there is a clear distinction between the two that you can't, what you can do and what you should do, Ms. Bottoms said. I do not believe that this was justified use of deadly force. So, who is Ms. Bottoms? That's what I want to know. Why are we taking her word for it? on what is or isn't a justified use of deadly force. Miss Bottoms said, I don't know, Mayor Mayor Keisha Lance Bottoms of Atlanta. So this is the mayor, and she says it was a use of deadly force. I mean, I don't know what she knows about law enforcement. I guess she got elected, but it doesn't necessarily mean she can, you know, take a proper stance on this issue. Uh, she's obviously going to be liberal too. I'm sure this is liberal run area, liberal Atlanta. It's a predominantly black area for sure. And yeah, so she's just trying to toe the line and go anti-cop. And again, it's a bad thing. I'm not 
defending that like i wouldn't say hey let's try and kill someone like some people want to defend him because it's like if you're running away are you really a threat well yeah you might be running away from those cops but that guy was a threat to everyone else in the area he could have just went on and killed someone else multiple people he could have used that taser on a child on a dog who knows like that guy was in danger and he was just messing up and i mean i don't know why this is buried in the middle of the story like he failed a sobriety test he tried to run he took a cop's weapon and i don't think there's proof like the problem is like the cop had to shoot him but no one's saying how can you know he was trying to kill him with that shot i mean you try to shoot someone running away from you trying to save the rest of the town you're not necessarily going to be going for a kill shot like unless he specifically aimed for the head and we have proof he's calling out a headshot or something i mean this just happened as a bad circumstance and had this guy just not been committing all these crimes had he not been fighting with the cops or using their weapons against them he could have easily lived and just went to jail or something or you know he should have stayed home that night and not fallen asleep in a wendy's parking lot because he's all high on something you know that's the real story here and the real problem is this kind of race hustling around it and trying to blame it all on the cops who are the really the people trying to help miss bottoms rapid response to the fatal shooting signaled the heightened scrutiny facing law enforcement as a wave of protest against police violence continues in many cities around the country a movement that has already prompted a number of changes to local police policies as well as a broader conversation about the ongoing racism that people of color experience in the justice system and nearly every other facet of american life so this is clearly this sort of the New York Times has taken the left wing side. They're, they're saying here straight up, they're saying justice system is racist. Every single aspect of their lives are racist. So whenever you hear someone say that, what do you think? You really think, oh, everything is racist that happens to them? Because I feel like that's a bit of a stretch. And I feel like they're just reaching and they just blame everything on racism. That's how I see it. And I see it as them playing cover. These people aren't happy. They're very negative, very angry people. They're upset that they live in this country where they're a minority and they see these other groups of people doing well. I mean, they're just, a lot of it's jealousy. They're upset that, you know, white people are succeeding. Jewish people are doing well. Asians are killing it. You know, Hispanics are even working really hard and building themselves up and growing great communities. You know, all this is coming out of jealousy and about of trying to take down white people. It's anti-white racism, anti-cop rhetoric, and it also stems from the liberals trying to kind of unsettle America, make us more unstable, you know, less safe. They want us on edge. They want us voting based on fear in the upcoming election. That about wraps things up. I hope you guys enjoyed today's video. Make sure you comment your thoughts and everything below. Also hit that like button to help us get shared. And until next time, you guys have a great day.